question that we need to ask ourselves am i living my own life is my expression my own or is it a borrowed expression many times we don't even realize we do things which are borrowed which are not our own we start to live somebody else's life it's no more our own expression i was recently reading the story of this very beautiful young girl who goes into the school every day she sits in a on a bench and the teacher observes observes this child this girl child that she cannot sit still on his desk on her desk her body keeps moving every few minutes she'll just get up and she's not able to focus on the on the on the class she's looking around her body is moving all the time not still so the class teacher calls the parents tells the parents that your child has a psychological problem she has a hyperactivity syndrome i think this is a true story by the way she says this child has a hyperactivity syndrome when he is saying that to the parents suddenly an old wise teacher of the same school comes into the class and he says okay let's leave the child for a moment in the room let's all walk out and very smartly he puts a radio in the room in the classroom so the immediate teacher parent and this wise teacher they all go out of the class they put a radio in the room and the child is alone in the room and then they watch from a window the child starts to dance and the moves of her dance is as if you know this dance is a divine gift to her that is when they realize that this child is actually a dancer and the story goes that this child finally goes into the hollywood and becomes a very very famous dance instructor there this is a very common story in almost every household we are borrowing our expressions from the world around we are borrowing our expressions from society from from influences all around it's like an apple is trying to become a banana and then feels that i should be a successful banana this is how the whole life becomes a struggle this is how our expressions are lost this is how we start to live somebody else's dream and when we do that now this apple can never be as impactful or as tasty as it's in hindi there is a word called swarup as its existential nature is this apple is is throwing all the gifts that nature has put into it and trying to you know take on the skin of a banana will it work i'm asking life doesn't work like that but human beings we still try to do that in maybe in some comp- compulsions maybe in under some huge influences maybe we can call it conditioning but eventually the apple never becomes a banana though apple thinks perceives itself to be a banana and lives in that deformed illusionary perception now will the apple ever be happy will the apple ever be joyous will the apple ever be impactful in the work that the apple apple's destiny is to do think about it as a as a thought yeah i talked about the impact you know when if an apple is trying to become a banana the impact will not be there of of apple's existence then apple's existence will have no impact why because the whole thing is coming from an borrowed so it's like a borrowed expression the apple is trying to get a borrowed expression hmm? there's another beautiful story i want to share with you i called it the sugar story before the story i want to think about for a for a minute when are we most happy when are we most joyous when are we most thrilled in life small moments of joy and thrill whenever you you're able to express yourself authentically hmm, to the other person to somebody to maybe your own self whenever you're able to express yourself very authentically there's a deep joy as if something has been resolved or achieved today and then that act of expression is also very impactful on the other person because it came from a very deep space from within you yeah so i have a story to share with you again here the sugar story there was a very 
senior teacher in a village very well respected teacher thousands of people used to come to listen to this teacher as an audience once this teacher is sitting on a podium there are thousands of people out there this teacher is giving a, a lecture or a sermon and in between his wife comes running on the stage with his son young boy and in front of the entire audience she she tells this teacher that you are teaching these thousands of people every day you can't even teach your own son he eats too much of sugar we know that sugar is not good for his health so much sugar is not good for his health yet you never stop him you never teach him not to eat so much of sugar and you teach the whole village thousands of people every day why can't you teach your own son so this wise teacher looks at the the mother which is his wife and the son and the audience imagine the scene and he says my dear wife just give me 30 days i will teach this son of ours after 30 days everybody is perplexed mother son and the whole audience is perplexed but he says with you know while bowing down to just give me 30 days all right now 30 days are passed again the same setting he is on a large podium there's thousands of people attending the talk suddenly he remembers now this is the 30th day he calls for his wife and the son both come on the podium he looks into the eyes of his son and very lovingly he tells his son dear do not eat so much of sugar it's not good for your health please understand little quantities are okay but not such huge quantities of sugar every day the son looks at the in the eyes of the father very intently bows down saying yes sir i will not do that i will not eat so much of sugar from now onwards scene changes now everybody is perplexed huh let's say the camera goes to the audience the audience is perplexed and you know some people from the audience get up and ask sir this phenomena we are not able to comprehend beyond our understanding what happened if you just had to tell this one sentence to your son and he he just agreed on this why did you take 30 days you could have said the same sentence 30 days ago on the same day the teacher says no because i too was fond of sugar i too was eating a lot of sugar at that time i couldn't give this instruction this teaching to my son because it would have come from a inauthentic space and it would have lost its impact so for something to have deep impact it needs to come from authentic space so that is why for last 30 days i was practicing myself not to eat sugar it took me 30 days to master my sugar eating habit now i have mastered mastered it i'm not eating that much of sugar in, anymore now i have the right conviction and authenticity to tell this to my son and that is the reason the son listened to it the impact was direct 